Hey guys, so you all voted and told me what you want the game for Retrowave to be, at least the first one I attempt to do at some point. And you guys came up with Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan Denetsu or Dragon Ball Z Legend of the Super Saiyan, which was an RPG that was only released over in Japan, so it was fully in Japanese, and it was kind of difficult to, to play back really when it was kind of popular back in like elementary school, middle school, when you try to emulate it. But it has become fully translated at this point, so you can get it completely in English and play all the way through it, which is great. Except if I want to play it on real hardware, like this Super Nintendo, it's very difficult to do. You have to order one, maybe from overseas, or uh, find a website. Or you can get one of those flash carts for like $150 or so. But I figured I'd take the opportunity to show you guys um, a few things that I would have to do, which included building Super Nintendo carts like this one. Well, this one's Star Ocean, so this one's, this one's a little more difficult to do than what I'm going to show you guys today. But this is just an example I grabbed. Um, so we're going to build a fully translated... Legend of the Super Saiyan, Dragon Ball Z Legend of Super Saiyan for the Super Nintendo. So we're going to have to do some pretty serious work here. While it is the one of the easier games to build in the retro, uh, really the repro universe, it's still kind of difficult, but I figure we can have some fun. You guys can really see the process behind it if you've ever been curious, and uh, we'll try to build a, a fully translated Dragon Ball Z Legend of Super Saiyan right now. So the first thing we have to do is learn a little bit about the game we're trying to reproduce here, and in this case, we're trying to make the Dragon Ball Z Legend of Super Saiyan. I loaded it up here in SNES 9X, and it really gives us a lot of information about the game. The ones we really need to worry about, though, are it's pretty straightforward. We need to know, is it a high ROM or a low ROM, which will tell you which boards we can use. We need to know how large the ROM is itself, which we can kind of tell just from the file size of one megabyte, or in this case, eight megabits. And then we need to know if it uses SRAM to save. In this case, it uses 64 kilobits of RAM to save on, and that's pretty much all we need to know to make this game. We're gonna be using a donor cart, is what it's called, to be making this game. We're gonna basically remove the mask ROM here that you see, and we're going to be replacing that with another chip. This one happens to have SRAM, a battery, and everything we need to build it and have it work correctly. Always make sure you test your game before you start working on it. Just make sure it works correctly before you start pulling chips off. This one in particular is a Ken Griffey Jr.'s Major League Baseball Presents, and it works fine. So we're just gonna go ahead and turn this back off and get to work. Next up, we need to pick which chip we're gonna use. In this case, we only need a certain chip, the 27C801. It supports one megabyte of storage and will match up pretty well with the Super Nintendo board. Now we need to figure out a way to write to the chip, and the way we do that is we use an EEPROM burner. And you'll see two here. The one to the left that I'm picking up now is a G540, and it's a good way to get started. It usually runs about $50 online, ships from China or sometimes Seattle if you find it on eBay. You'll see around the front, it is a USB EEPROM burner. You want to go with one of those instead of a parallel port burner. To the right, you'll see the GQ4X. It's a little more expensive, but it supports more types of chips. In this case, this one usually is around $100 to $110. Ships from the same place as either China or Seattle. Also runs through USB and even has an extra port for auxiliary power. This is my usual choice here for an EEPROM burner. Now with that out of the way, let's pop the chip in. Pretty straightforward. Line up the pins, and then you just push the lever down to lock it in the place. The chip should not be able to move at this time. Now we're going to go ahead and get our file set up. You'll see to the right here we have a program called Wasabi. You can see it right on the front. It's kind of a funny name. It actually lets us import our ROM file, and then it'll tell us all about it, and it'll actually set it up. It'll redo and move around address lines so that we only have to re wire two different pins, which is awesome. It's way better than it used to be where you have to rewire five pins. So you can see here it has all our information. The way we do that is we click the little swap pin icon there and make sure it's at 27C801 and then we hit OK and it'll tell us that it wrote the file that we need to then burn. What you're seeing here is basically the process we go through to now burn that image to the chip. First, we're gonna check to make sure it is completely blank, which usually you may have to erase it, and if that's the case, you could take it outside and leave it in sunlight. After that, we pretty much have to write the chip. What you're gonna see here is a sped up version of that, because usually it takes a lot longer than this. Sometimes it takes up to eight minutes, sometimes even 10, depending on what's going on to write it. After that, it will verify, and then we'll be left with a fully burned and ready to solder on chip. This whole process, like I said, generally takes anywhere from 10 to 11 minutes from start to finish. Speaking of soldering, it's pretty much time now to remove the chip from the board. I'm going to use a desolder tool for that. Basically, it just heats up and then sucks the solder 
out, and then you basically just discard it. You'll see me kind of discarding into that tray right above the board that I'm working on. And really, you just want to take your time here because you can damage the board or the chip uh, essentially doing this. So you want to be very careful. You want to make sure all the solder's off before you try to dislodge the chip. Generally, you can kind of push on the back pins as soon as you make sure there's no more solder just to help it off the board. After that, it'll be free and it'll be left with a nice clean set of holes basically to then pop the new chip into. Awesome. Now I did mention earlier that we would still have to rewire two points and that still holds true here. See I've bent up two different pins uh, from the right. If you count over it's the second pin from the right. From the left it would be the eighth pin and after you bend those up you just want to kind of work this chip into the board and all those holes there basically have to be lined up with those pins. It can be kind of really tough at times but just take your time like I said you don't want to bend and damage the chip and really eventually it'll just kind of pop in and you're pretty much ready to start soldering. So the first thing I'll do is usually flip the board over and just put a couple of points of solder on there just to help anchor the chip down for what I'm working on. I really don't want the chip to move around or even fall out while I'm trying to connect those wires and cross those points. So you're going to see me here just kind of dabbing some solder on a few points. Um, again, this just locks it in. Now I'm going to start by tinning each pin right here just to help so that the wire will connect easier. And then at this point I just start soldering the wires and again we're just crossing those two points. So I'm just extending this pin to the hole on the opposite side and vice versa with the other pin. And this is just going to complete the rewiring we have to do so that the entire chip works with the board and all the pins line up with the pin out. Now that that's all done, I'm just going to go ahead and solder each pin here. Make sure you take your time. I've been soldering for a while, so it's going to look like I'm going pretty quick here maybe to you. But just take your time. It, it really, there's no rush really. I just, I'm kind of just rifling through them here. And after this, when we have these all soldered, the game's pretty much ready to test. I'm also going to go ahead and replace the old battery with a new one, only because I'm already in there and why not, might as well complete it. And guys, it's moment of truth time, we're going to pop the game in so the chips are facing back, flip the system on, and there we go, Dragon Ball Z Legend of the Super Saiyan works fine on the Super Nintendo with real hardware using a 27C801 and a GQ4X programmer, very good. And that's pretty much it guys, that is the whole process of building a Super Nintendo game. Now, this is an easier game to build, there are much more difficult ones that if you guys are interested in this video, maybe I'll go into. Um, I've pretty much built just about every Super Nintendo game and Nintendo and Genesis as well. So I've pretty much done all of those. Um, this was just fun to do. It's not really, uh, it doesn't make much sense anymore since you can buy these games super cheap overseas or just get a flash cart for your system and just load them onto an SD card. But it's fun to do. It's a nice little project for an afternoon or a weekend if you just wanna kinda of play around with it and see what you can make happen. But yeah guys, this is what we do, like I said, to build and make games and put them in either stores or sell them online. This is kind of what 
uh, myself and, a, and a, like a circle of others would do. And there are some other tricks that I, 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 I'm not sure if I could show anyone because it's, they still are able to sell them, specifically something like a Star Fox 2, for example. But we'll see. We'll see going forward. I'll, maybe I'll talk to some of them and see if, if they don't mind if I put it out there. But that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little look into the repro world. It's not a big deal anymore, like I said, because it's been kind of obsolete now since you can pretty much buy them and resell them easily, but a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.